So in this video, I'm going to continue on the hand tech basics. I'm going to show a few more functions that can be used with uh, this software. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this uh, square wave generator. Uh, this is not the one that's in front of the hand tech. This is a different one. Uh, and so here we can see that there is some type of wave going on here. Uh, I know it's a square wave because that's what the generator is making. But uh, if we didn't know that and all we saw was this yellow blur, what this is telling us is that the waveform is changing much faster than the screen can generate it because the time base is just too wide. The frequency is too high and it cannot be seen at this time base. So here we're going to change it from 100 milliseconds per division. We're going to lower it way down. Let's go to one millisecond per division. Okay, that's a lot better. So this is how we, this is what the wave is. It just could not be displayed at the time base we had before. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in the other video was uh, about trigger slope. Uh, trigger slope can be found right here. And what this means is it, you tell the scope where you want the, uh, the voltage to be drawn only if the voltage is increasing or decreasing. So um, here's a trigger. So the trigger is at this point and it's going to be drawn here on the graph. But as you can see, you see how it's going on the upslope of the square wave. If you move back and forth, you can see it stays on the upslope. If we wanted to draw on the downslope, we just uh, go here, hit negative, and now it's on the downslope. So now the trigger is on this side. And this can be very useful especially if you're looking at a waveform extremely, extremely closely. So let's go in a bit deeper. Let's go to 100 microseconds per division if you scroll even further. Let's go to 50 microseconds per division. Okay, see, if you just want to look at the downward edge of the square wave, this will be very helpful because if you were only stuck on the other side of the square wave, you would not be able to see the detail here. Or if you want to go to the other side, you can just hit positive, and there's the other edge of the square wave. So that's why this uh, feature is very useful. <clears throat> so another thing I wanted to talk about today, let's go back to a wider screen so we can see more of the square wave. I want to stay on the positive slope and move this here, <clears throat> is the cursor. So the cursor is, uh, you can say almost like a ruler for the, um, for the graph here or for the, or for the screen. So you can do source, we're going to keep it on channel one, and we're going to do type, we're going to do cross. And you can move it anywhere you want. And the measurements of the cursor are going to be down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to measure the frequency of this square wave. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one end of the cursor here, and then we're going to click and hold and drag it to another point. And we're going to do it right there. And the reason I pick these two points is that this is what you would consider the beginning of the of one cycle of the square wave. You can consider this the end of one cycle of the square wave. And it gives you some information here. It tells you the amount of time. It's 1.21 milliseconds. So from here to here is 1.21 milliseconds, which makes sense because if between each dotted line, it's one millisecond from here to here, 1.21 sounds about right. It tells you the voltage difference. So it tells you the voltage difference between here and here. So that's 8.48 volts. That means that the voltage from here to here is 8.48. And it tells you the frequency. This is telling you how many times per second the square wave is changing. at 826.2 hertz. Now this is a very useful feature. You can use this. You can, in fact, pause the graph in case, let's say, the square wave was changing consistently and you wanted to see different uh, parts of the square wave, see what frequency they were at. You could pause the square wave, measure one, measure another one. It works. But what if the frequency changes? And this is why I'm not using the uh, function generator in front of the scope because it is not adjustable. But I have one here that is. So let's say you're adjusting the frequency. Now, what do you do? Now you'd have to click on this part here. Oh, not right. Click on it. Click drag and do it again and you get a new number but what if it changes again let's see this will get very tedious very quickly so there is another function you can use let's go to the cursor menu here uh, type uh, none we want no cursor. 
cursor right now. And you can go to something called measure. Now, since we're measured, we want to know what the frequency is, and we want to know what the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is, and we want to know what the on and off time is of the square wave. We have to pick different functions within the measure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the frequency. And since frequency is how many times it goes up and down per second, uh, it's going to be a horizontal measure. So we're going to go to measure, horizontal, and we're frequency. And there it is. The frequency is there. It's constantly displayed. It doesn't matter if I change it back and forth. It stays there. It, it, it gives me a, a live reading. Now, uh, let's say I want to know what duty cycle was. Um, for those of you who don't know, duty cycle is just the percentage of on time to off time. If we consider this up here, the high part of the square wave on and the low part of the square wave off, it's just the, the, <clears throat> the percentage of when it's on to when it's off. Oh, I'm sorry, the percentage of when it's on to the total time of the cycle. So let's do that. Measure, horizontal, uh, positive duty cycle. So this is the percentage of time that it's on compared to the whole cycle, which means that the negative duty cycle should be uh, 100 minus this number. Let's see if that matches up. It should. Horizontal, negative duty cycle, and there it is. Uh, if you don't want percentage, if you want to know exactly how much time it's on, you can do uh, another measure called pulse width. So this is telling you that it's on or high for 690, 95 microseconds. Uh, horizontal off, negative pulse width, same type of deal. Okay, um, now let's let's <clears throat> let's move away from the uh, horizontal measurements. Let's go to the vertical measurements. For example, what is the uh, peak to peak? Uh, what is the RMS uh, and the like? So let's clear this. Just hit clear measure and gets rid of everything. Let's do the vertical. You can have the vertical and the horizontal up together, but I just <clears throat> I want to have it a little cleaner. So we're gonna pick the maximum, minimum, peak to peak, and let's do RMS. Okay. So here this is telling us that the maximum voltage that this square wave is outputting is 8.89 volts. The minimum is uh, 9.77 millivolts. Make sure to watch your uh, watch your units here. So this is practically zero. It's telling you that the peak to peak is 8.8, .8, which is makes sense because it pretty much goes to zero. So the peak to peak should match the voltage maximum. And then it gives you this interesting one called RMS. Now RMS stands for root mean squared, and it's just a way of averaging uh, a wave or averaging uh, a graph. So this means that if you were to put, for example, your multimeter, your multimeter on the um, output of this square wave generator, this is the voltage that your multimeter would read because your multimeter is not an oscilloscope. It'll give you the RMS or the root mean squared of the voltage that's being outputted, and this is this is it. And you can actually change it depending on the duty cycle. So let me adjust the duty cycle a little bit. You can see it's actually going up the RMS. And if you go the other way, you can see that the RMS is going down. And this just means that the average voltage, oops, went away. There it is. This just means that the average voltage um, between the up and the down, or the high and the low, is about 6.3 volts. All right. Now I want to adjust to a much slower uh, square wave. Uh, because not all the square waves or all the signals you'll be looking at are going to be this fast. Some are going to be much faster, some are going to be slower. So let's adjust this, edit, and uh, just clear the measure out. So I'm going to turn off my function generator. I'm going to switch some pins here and there to make it go more slowly. Okay. So now we, we see that the square wave is much, much slower because now we're still in the same time base, one millisecond per division, but look, the square wave has gotten much, much larger. So maybe we need to go to a wider time base. So let's go to 100 milliseconds per division. Okay, so let's see if we can slow this down a bit more. No, wrong one. I 
I like that one. Okay, so here you can see that um, the square wave is much, much slower. If we have the 100 milliseconds per division, you can see that it's, it's on for about 200 milliseconds and off for about 200 milliseconds. And we can actually measure that. Let's see. Um, horizontal frequency. It's about 2.5 hertz, so it's cycling 2.5 times a second. Now, this might not be the most useful graph because it literally takes one second to draw this whole thing because if we do 100 milliseconds times 10, that's 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So a better way to look at this would, would be, well, this won't always apply, but it applies sometimes, is to adjust the horizontal setup. So you would go to this H here, the horizontal setup. You can actually do some of the functions here. You can change the time per division, but you can also do this. You can go to something called a roll. And it will draw the wave as it appears. Now, the only problem with this is that you have to track with your eyes the wave. And it's kind of hard to see the changes. So I actually prefer something called Oh, I'm sorry, I want to scan. I want it to go to roll. There it is, okay. So this is what I prefer. You can see the changes happening pretty much in real time and it never jumps. It's, the new information is always coming from the right side. So you can see, it makes it visually easy to see when there are changes. As you can see the square is slowing down. I'm picking up. See the duty cycles changing, the frequencies changing. And a flat line. Now he's dead. Oh, there we go. So it's a pretty useful feature. You'll find many uses for this. This is actually very useful when uh, looking at throttle position sensors or the outputs of potentiometers. So uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.